Hi everyone, got another little ink box card for you today. I'm using the Twilight Lily from um, the new Sunbloom collection. Um, there's also a little bee there, I love Tracy's name for them, the Bumble Hums. Um, he's just one from that stamp. So I'm going to be using my Uncharted Mariner ink today because uh, I just love that shade of blue with the pinks but you can obviously choose which colour you would like yourself. Now I'm going to use a piece of A6 Multifarious. I really like using this size for these cards because um, once I've chopped the piece off that I need for my ink box card, I've got a small section left which I can make a little tag really easily out of, punch a little hole here, put some thread through and I've used up the whole of my piece of card without without trying really. So let's get that back and um, I'm going to use the biggest area, biggest square um, of the box by using another box and inking up the base rather than using the actual lid which is just a slightly smaller rounded square. So it obviously doesn't matter which one, which colour that is. So let me get my Uncharted Mariner. This is a really juicy ink pad because it's fairly new to me. And um, the juiciness of your ink pad does make a difference. And this one we'll get lots of colour from. Holding on to that, and I'm going to press that down on my card. There we go. So we've got a nice print of um, a, a rounded square. So I'm using a size one brush. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, I like to put a puddle of water on to my card and then draw the uh, ink through. You can ink the line and pull it through the other way. It's just that I find I like the, the way it puddles that way, if that makes sense. But if you've got quite a dry ink pad, um, putting it right, Putting your wet brush on the edge of the ink does make help help draw it out. So a puddle of water and then touching it up to the to the ink. And it comes through. There we go. Around the other edge. And I've said this before in another video when I've done this technique. It's just a great way of making a quick card. And you could get a few of these backgrounds done um, if you wanted to. Um, and then they're just even quicker to grab and stamp on. So there we go. I like to pull some colour all the way through to the middle, but that's up to you. I would like to do that. Right, I'm going to give it a blast with the hot air dryer. There we go. I just really like the watercolour effect of this technique. Has. Right, so there we go. We've got our one. Tiny little bit dry there, but I think that'll be okay. So I'm just going to trim it um, round it just off this piece of card, basically. I'm just going to do that off camera. I'll leave that one with you while I do that. Now I'm going to use a um, piece of paper to mask off this corner here while I um, from the Twilight Lily stamp. It's quite a long stamp. Um, and I really must buy a block that fits, but I don't need it to at the moment because I'm just using that top bit. But I want the lily to not come over this corner. I'm quite happy for it to overflow with its little petals, but I really didn't want it to come down here. So what I'm going to do is 
fold my piece of paper up to that base there and then just fold it across that corner and that just masks it off. You could obviously use a piece of low tack tape um, if that's what you wanted but I'm a bit lazy and use, uh, tend to use what's there if I can get away with it. <laughs> so I'm inking um, the Twilight Lily up with First Fine Twilight. Oh, that is rather well. I'm going to have it coming off here, I think. Now, I'm going to need to press it just a little bit firmer down at the bottom, a bit like when you're stamping through a stencil because um, that paper is overlapping. There we go, that should be okay. Lovely. Isn't the design just beautiful? So detailed. They're just a joy to stamp with, aren't they, these stamps? I'm going to use a little bit of one of the star signs um, stamps uh, as just some text in the background. I really like using these because the text is so tiny. So I'm just going to ink. Ink some up, stamp it off a little bit and then just add a bit of texture onto the card. There we go. We're going to use um, the same ink pad colour for the words with love. If I can get the lid back off. Decided to suction itself back on. There we go. Up with love down there. And then for the B or the bumble hum, as they will forever be known, I'm going to use um, Nocturne. Thought I'd lost them then, they'd buzzed off. So there's a whole little um, swarm of bees one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we're just using the one on the end and using the corner of the ink pad to just ink up that little B. There he is. And we'll pop him buzzing along to this flower. There he is. Or well, she is. It'll be he, won't it? The queen will be hanging around somewhere else in her hive and then the last thing to do is um color them in so the bees quick and easy just um i'm using the um mondolutes mondolutes um watercolor pencils i absolutely love a watercolor pencil because you can color in with them and you can intensify the color with water but these ones particularly are some of them can be a bit hard and these are a really soft pencil just trying to get a bit of water off my um onto my hand and there we go it's as quick and easy as coloring that bee is and then i'm just gonna color in my flowers kind of almost a bit roughly really um I'm not going all the way to the end because I want them to be a bit lighter. I'll show you. Get a bit of water on my brush. So the adding the water in will just turn it into a paint, and you can pull it up to the point. So this is a number one brush. It's really nice and fine for these petals. There we go. So leaving a bit of the paler, pulling the colour right to the top just makes it a little bit paler um, and gives a bit of life to your flowers, I guess, a bit more realistic. So I'm just going to add 
Well, that's the rest of them. So you don't you don't need to be the neatest of colorer inners if there is such a word. Because you're going to use it as paint. You need to be a bit painter as a bit um, more specific with your paintbrush, but don't need to worry so much with the pencil. Let's get some water on there, get it made up into a paint. So it's very relaxing. It's just grown up colouring in. It's very good for you. There we go. Last little bit down here. Need a bit more water on my brush. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a darker pencil and add a bit of shading, I guess it is, to the so these dots give you a good guide and guideline as to where the darker patches are in these flowers. So we're just colouring on those areas. And again, get the paintbrush out and blend that in. And then we can use a wet paintbrush and um, is it quite a, get quite a little puddle going on your um, end of your pencil. And then we can give that a tap and it will give us some splatter. So there we go. Now, obviously, you can also um, colour them in with watercolour paints. You could use your ink, your inks and get a puddle of ink and watercolour them in like that. But the pencils are very lovely. Let's get a wink of Stella for that, um, that bee's wings. And give them a bit of sparkle as it comes along. There we go. And there we go. That's it. It just needs square of black paper to mount it and it can be mounted onto a card and there we have it a little twilight lily being visited by a bumble hum i hope you enjoyed that i hope you have a go and um, please let me know if you do and tag me in the in one of the groups it'd be lovely to see what you um you come up with whether you use different colours for the lilies um, or a different background colour and um, just let me know. Bye!